You're listening to Mammal Watching with Charles Foley and John Hall. You can find other episodes at mammalwatching.com slash podcast. But the most exciting thing we did there was, uh, I mean, we, we were looking at elephants and rhinos and swamp deer and other things to put back. But part of our work was to orient the local community uh, not to hunt. Uh, because uh, because of years of neglect that place, people had gone on hunting uh, small things. Uh, the, the big game was uh, taken out by uh, the, the strife. But when we went and started talking about these things, people then started coming in, into our offices, into our field ca- stations and giving animals and saying, okay, you told us not to hunt. Here are some animals that my uncle had caught, my father had caught, or my son had caught, and now we want to give it back. And among them were two clouded leopard cubs. And this was the enigmatic cat. Most people in the West think of the snow leopard as an enigmatic cat, which it is, but not as much as the clouded leopard, because the clouded leopard, you know, well, for those who don't know, uh, is, is a cat who's got a canine larger than the saber-toothed tigers in proportion to its skull, the largest ever tooth uh, that has evolved in an extant species. Um, it's, it's an animal that, that lives on the trees and preys on monkeys. It's an animal that can come head first down a tree and uh, you know uh, retain agility and mobility. So it's a fascinating creature, and it's less seen than the snow leopard is. In Juno, a friend of mine uh, took me out one one morning kayaking, and I don't swim. One of one of my uh, big minuses, and uh, he he taught, you know, sometime before putting me into a kayak and teaching me rudimentary kayaking. And, and he said, I'm safe. It was absolute bullshit, of course, because he took me to a pod of humpback whales. Uh, and they were breaching all around me. Luckily, calves were breaching. I don't know what would have happened to me if, if a mother had breached. But uh, you know the Alaskan waters, and it can be pretty still and si- you know, silent uh, in terms of human noise. I come from India, where there's rarely a space without um, human noise, other than very high mountains. So here it's completely still air, and then you can hear the of the whales. And I was drenched in their exhalations as they came out because they were right around me uh, for 45 minutes or so. Uh, and that was probably, and because I was in a kayak amidst the whales rather than a whale watching boat or it's a hire or whatever, uh, I, I suppose that was uh, very, very special. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then visit mammalwatching.com slash podcast.